we begin to pursue him to go. As I pursue him, you know, with the dust, blue dust make us to slow down. All our fiery actually met Solomon here. I wrote five letters to President Obasanjo. When you look at the letter, I say, oh, Amos, he says he's a very stupid boy, very stubborn. He doesn't fear any human being. I'm Sergeant Amos I was a listener to the Nigerian Police Force 1st August 1981 at Police College here in Ikeja, Lagos. So I, uh, I traveled around the old Federation, only took those things I've ever been to in my life. The first gang of Anini, I followed arrested him. That time, we are on patrol. That's one police station. Every time we have a problem of repairing vehicle, that is workshop in uh, Bende, in uh, Bini Mason. So we went and repaired our vehicle that day, that night, because the brake failure. That's what the driver said. As I was just repairing it, I was sitting down in the front of the police station, you know, with my K2. So I was just relaxed on the SB vehicle. When Anini was coming with 505, he parked in my front, but I don't know him. He said, Officer, how are you? I said, I'm fine. As a weekend, we greeted. They were expecting me to come down to go and meet them. As soon as I, I me a lot of money, that they could have finished my life. But they see me that I was just sitting there comfortably. I did not even bother to go to come down. And he said, Okay, bye bye. They waved me. They are four in the vehicle. And I waved them too. Not up to two minutes, I saw the vehicle coming from the. That's a very big station. That's the station where the George Yam was detained that time. The, the, the station has a football field, very big. They were running, coming. Say, oh, boy, oh, boy, do this one five, oh, five. I quoted the number. They said, that's an that's an That is how I, I jumped inside the vehicle. We begin to pursue him to go. As I was pursuing him, you know, we are directly not behind Anini. So I was telling my team leader, I said, look, oh, you are with the asset, walking, talking. Be communicating to the control room that we are directly behind Anini. So all the other vehicle coming behind, they will not continue shooting. We could not kill ourselves. I said, yes, able to arrive, able to arrive, able to arrive. He began to radio the control room. So when Anini see that the speed we are coming behind is terrible, he entered Fida Road. You know, with the dust, blue dust make us to slow down. All our fiery actually met Solomon here. Uh, later we saw that Anini break. So when we got there, we saw blood, pool of blood. If you remember, sir, that, that was the time the IG said that uh, anybody with bullet wound should not be treated in Benin. All the radio stations, all the newspapers carry the story that anybody with bullet wound do with a police report, don't treat such person. We call them, we call them up the, that, that night don't come. So all the patrol team, they, they begin to arrive. We saw plenty, we called on up the place. So, when they break, we saw where, where the blood stopped at the main road, but we didn't see the suspect. That is how that guy escaped with bullet wound. So where they take him for treatment? Part of society, somebody gave him information that somebody was treating bullet wound so 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 please so. And uh, that is how part of society said we should move to the place. When we got there, we just met this guy, Solomon Osema Kwe something, on that uh, cocoa tree. That building was two building. You know it's a steep forest. We were sleeping on that, uh, this a small mat, a small uh, student phone. That is how we carried him. The third day, I was posted to airport junction in Benin. Where I was posted to, I saw somebody coming out for the military hospital. We called him and said, Mobile man, what are you doing in the military hospital with arms? If you want to cause another commotion, he said, No, he was posted there officially that uh, one hour was shot. Solomon, something, something. I said, oh, I said, okay, that's uh, the, the that guy we arrested. They said, yes, he's in the hospital there. I went and greeted him. I sat down with him on the same bed. We, we, that's why we acted this commission of police in Nedo for oppression because the oppression was so tough. Akagbos was the another CP. Akagbos was shot. The, they shot the driver here. No, no, he was the opposite that time robber. As I sat down with the, this uh, Solomon or same Marco something, I said, well, Solomon say. He must, how am I going to be saved? I said, well, one officer will be here. Very tall, that time is coming. You see some mobile men, soldier will be following him, telling the truth. He's the only person that can save you from Mr. President. That was, I was telling about part of Saturday. And actually, when Saturday went there, he told him everything, how, they, how, they can, how we can get an enemy, and the man was and cool. That led to the all arrest before God and man. That's how I was involved in that operation from beginning to the end. On that day, we were patrolled. 
patrolling Lagos to Ibadan Expressway. We have about, about 19 patrol vehicles, SB vehicles, you know, not a police, uh, police uh, van. So we have a flat tire. My team leader daddy was a supervisor at Shabi. We are five in number on that patrol. So when we had a flat tire, we went about a, a, a spare tire from a Bogana Shabi. That vehicle has no spare tire. So the man gave us the, the tire to fix. As it just finished, as I said, we should go and eat. And we cannot leave our beat because that patrolling, we are patrolling from Lagos to Baden. That nice vehicles, anywhere our, our vehicle reached, the next uh, point we move to the next store. That's how we are going from Lagos to Baden, going around because of these uh, hoodlums. So on that day, when we had this flat tire, as I said, let us go and eat. We left two people behind. So the city of your state by then was uh, Abubakar South. A lot of Abubakar is now late. He was coming to Lagos for conference. He saw the two of our boys. He said, Baby, they are on legal duty. He searched them, not to find on them. So when I ran, I met them. He said, uh, hey, What's your name? I said, This is my name, sir. Look at it. His name was Solana. I said, Yes. We are, I'm together with these two officers. He said, Okay. Where are the money people you realize? I said, If I have money with me, I cannot come and meet you. He said, Yes, we are right. That's all. So later, my team leader came. Uh, the CPU said, They should go and search that vehicle. My team leader, I better shall be before God and man. He did not deny it. He said, okay, I have money inside that vehicle. The money was given to me by Good Samaritan to buy a fairly used tire for this patrol vehicle. He said, This is the money. He look at it with rubber bond. You know, with rubber bond. He looked at it, okay, uh, officer, you have a query for this money. As I said, no objection, sir. That is their last statement today. Actually, as I was giving query, he answered it. That's all. Later, about three months later, I don't know how it happened. Uh, CPO Ogun State, uh, Little John Okafor, invited us to Elewiran that we should come. When we reach Elewiran from Shagamu, you know, we based in Shagamu, that part of the team, we are about 90 vehicles, we based in Shagamu. So when we went to Elewiran, he said, What transfer between, between us and uh, Abubakar South? Our team leader, Abedra Shabi, is a super. That I was a two star. He explained to the CP. CP said, Okay, we should go back. We went back. About another three months later, he called us back. Ah, what is happening? Not knowing that somebody went and got shipped to him, that uh, when uh, the Lukafo had a problem in Bini, in Edo, during the Arenas case, one DSP was executed in that case. George, uh, we call him DSP, Judge Yamu. Not only Yamu should be executed, Okafo and Mary Margaret, woman DC, supposed to be executed along with Judge Yamu, but they covered the case. That's why only Judge Yamu was executed, that three star officer was executed for firing squad. So immediately, uh, immediately John Okafor heard that uh, Joseph Aka, my second in this case, was his, his, he was his only to Abubakar at that time in, in uh, Alagman. He said, go and suspend them. And with the four of us, we were suspended. Inspector David Duloide, Mr. Resi Pavel Peace, it's not late. Sergeant Joseph Aka, he's not with four months, it's not late. Myself, I thank God I'm still alive. And Corporal David Okwarobo, the two of us were alive to today. Ashari was not suspended to today. But presently, he's a commander. And so if we are actually committed on first, why should they exonerate the team leader who claimed he didn't have the money till this afternoon? He was not suspended. And I wrote a series of letters to the authorities. I wrote to President Mohamed, uh, to President Rodriguez Goba Sanjo, who happened to be my father. Goba Sanjo refused to assist me. I wrote this piece of letter, he no replied to me. I took the last letter to his senior brother. They called Baba Alajo. Baba Alajo took the letter to Abuja. He gave to me personally with the doctor, who is the secretary of Ibogo. When he looked at the letter, I said, oh, he must. He says, he's a very stupid boy, very stubborn. He doesn't fear any human being. I said, oh. he said, okay, uh, Ebami, go and tell him to go and do a uh, labor in Ikeja. That I should, I should shoot the federal government. If I shoot the federal government, he they awarded me 100 million. He will pay it that day. Before he closed from office. That time they could not say, Amos is my son, he's my boy. That's what he told the senior brother. I continued writing letter, writing letter. I wrote to the late Yaradua. He replied to me. The reply is here. I wrote to the Senator David Mark when he was the Senate president. The reply is here. I wrote to Senator Dr. Bukola Saraki, distinguished Senator President by then. The reply is here. What they asked the Inspector of Police to do that time, they refused to do it. But when I wrote the last letter to Bukola Saraki through Senator Solomon Ola Mlika Diola, popularly called Yayi, he tabled it in the floor of the house, and I was invited to the Senate. After getting there, they obtained my evidence, they obtained the IG evidence, they obtained my team leader's evidence. 
Abedra Shabi was called upon. They obtained his evidence too. Then the Senate concluded that this is injustice. How did the Senate resolution with me is inside my bag here? They said this is purely injustice. That the police should call me back, promote me along with my mates, pay all my deal with letter of apology, making four conditions. The Senate passed resolution. That was December 15, 2015. They give the IG two weeks order. That two weeks is now seven years. Nothing was done. I lost everything in my life. A, a, a human rights lawyer that gave me a room in St. Gotha. We blew my roof last month. I don't have anything. God just said me that I bring all this document to the church. That is why you see me with all this document. Professor Sagi. Professor Sagi is a Sagi. He's a legal advisor to President Mohamed Bari presently. Daddy wrote to the IG on my behalf 2011 that are ah, you people punishing innocent person? The team leader that's supposed to be suspended is not suspended. For how many years? For almost 27 years. Now, why are you suspending these boys? They have suffered a lot. IG did not reply Professor Sagi's letter. I, I want Mr. President to magnanimously order the Inspector General of Police to obey the Senate resolution that I should be called back. Promote me along with my mate. Most of my mates retire as Assistant Commissioner of Police. Then some retire with CSP, that Chief, Chief Superior of Police. So they said they, I should be promoted along with my mates, call me back, promote me along with my mates, pay all my deal with a letter of apology. That's all. If Mr. Brent can do that for me, I will very much apply it.